How is it going there guys? Mr. Benji here and welcome back to episode number two of the basic multiplayer series. So in this video, what I'm gonna try and achieve try and achieve try what I'm gonna try and achieve is we're gonna try and achieve movement. Uh, in the next video we'll do camera movement and stuff like that, but in this video what we're gonna do is basically to move movement so that you can move around the map and do what you need to do. So here we go. What you're gonna need to do, first of all, is you are going to need to add a couple of things to your player. So if we go to the player, what we're going to need is a nav mesh. So if I just type in nav mesh and put a nav mesh agent on this bad boy. Uh, you can leave that as it is. It's just standard basic. I'm going to drag it up to the top simply because I always have my nav, nav meshes at the top. It's just the most basic form of grabbing it. You know, if you need to edit any variables and stuff, it's just easy enough to do it. And if you've done it right, it should look. It should automatically be to the size of your capsule. Or your tic tac, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that's the first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is we need to go into the scripts folder. Before I get into coding, I have made a scripts folder simply for project management purposes, and I've put the spawning script into there. So all other scripts will be in there unless it needs to be in a designated folder for said script. And just to elaborate a bit more on the spawning, I've edited it a little bit. So now what happens is when you click either host, client or server, the buttons will disappear as opposed to in the previous tutorial, I did it so the buttons didn't actually disappear. They just stayed in the game, which was not very good on my part. I should have done this first, but you know, it's basic code, it's basic enough, it's the exact same thing. Basically all that's happening is if, if you're not a client, blah, blah, start button, click start button, either start host, start client, or start server. Um, what could be done is, this looks a bit confusing, so what can actually happen is if I could put that back there, it's the exact same, it's the same code. So yeah, basically start button is getting called, and then once that button gets called, either you click start host, start client, start server, once that happens, it'll end the area, and then once it's ended, the buttons will disappear simple so what we need to do now is we need to create a code for the movement so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a code and I'm going to call it player controller I'm going to open that up didn't open up it opened up in a new one oh all right so that's annoying all right so I'm going to get rid of that one right so, play controller, what do we need to happen? So basically, we need to get the mouse position of the camera. So we need a camera, and we need to basically, once the input is hitting the ground, we need to be able to move that position which handled in the nav mesh. So what we're gonna to have to do before we get started is if we start using unity unity engine dot AI, that's for the nav mesh, and then we need to use so using MLAPI. Do we actually need that for now? MLAPI. We will put it in. It makes no difference because it all derives from the same thing anyway. And we'll call this a network behavior. Again, it all derives from mono behavior, so it doesn't really matter whether it be a network behavior or not. So we're gonna need a few variables as well, actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a public nav mesh agent. We're just gonna call that nav for simplistic purposes only. Uh, public camera, and we're gonna call that cam. Then we need to, I think that'll do for now, because all we need to do so we're doing a raycast as well actually so we don't actually need to do this but I'm just going to put private raycast raycast hit to be specific and we're just going to call that ray the reason I'm putting the raycast up here is because if I need to call a raycast from any other function other than the one it's in then it's just easier to do an all in one ray as opposed to doing individual rays it makes sense especially from the camera's perspective as well so in the start function, what we're going to do is we're going to say nav mesh equals uh, transform dot get component, and all we're going to get is the nav mesh, nav mesh, nav mesh agent on the transform object. That's as simple as that. 
Then what we're going to do is we are going to make it so if you click on, it depends, it, it, it all depends which mouse button you want to do. I'm just trying to figure out which button I use to actually move. I think it's left click, isn't it? Or is it right click? I'll, I'll do left click, it's, it's, it's simpler. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this movement its de designated function, or void or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I am going to call it, um, let's call it movement for simplistic reasons, just because I'm a basic bitch. Uh, I'm also going to chuck that into a if is local player, just because we don't want every other player pissing about with our movement. So I'm going to do void, that's body, void movement. So then the red space has got away. Then what we're going to do is actually I've called that wrong. Raycast hit. We want to be calling that hit, not ray. Don't know why I called it ray to be fair. Um, so yeah, what we want to do is basically want to get the camera's position. And when we click it, we want to set the destination of the nav mesh to said clicking area. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it ray, ray, uh, and that's going to get the camera dot screen point to ray, and then just the input dot mouse position. So if the input <coughs> input dot get key up or down, don't really matter, does it? Get key up. And then we're going to say key code dot mouse one. That is the left click. Then what we're going to happen is if we're going to call if physics dot raycast, and then we're going to call ray, and then out because it's sending something out hit, and then we're just going to set a, a random variable or distance so, so this hundred here is essentially the distance how far the ray is going to shoot so if you only want it to shoot like one in front of you then that means it's only going to shoot like one in front of you if you want it to shoot 100 or like infinity then you just set this to a big old number and it'll do so as you wish so what we want to do as well is we want to make it so that it just don't click on any object and it starts walking to it. We need to make sure that the floor is being clicked. And the easiest way to do this is if I put and, and then we're going to get the hit dot transform dot tag. And then that's going to equal to the floor. So basically what this does is whatever you click on and whatever it hits the transform of so the tag of the transform if it equals to the floor go there do something so what we're going to need to do before we start doing anything else is the floor we're going to need to tag it so add new tag add new tag and then floor not floor floor click floor tags floor right so if this if this floor is set to any other thing any other tag than floor it's not going to work so it's just as simple as that right so now what we're going to do is we're going to set it so that uh what what do we want to do so i mean you could technically get the coordinates for the mouse press but it don't matter because we don't need that so all we're going to do is we're going to put nav dot set destination and then we're going to set it to the hit point so wherever we've clicked basically hit dot point so hit dot point is wherever the mouse on your screen has clicked basically so now if we save this and we go to the floor click navigation if you haven't got this just go to your window uh, I don't actually know where it is in the visual script in AI navigation there you go it's in AI obviously because it's AI what a dongus so yeah if you haven't got that go to windows AI navigation click it you'll get this little uh, inspector navigation panel thing here so what you want to do is you want to click on the floor click navigation static and then click it to walkable and then in bake just click bake and it'll bake a simple nav mesh onto your onto your screen so radius if we make that a little thinner b 
fake it, it'll get closer to the edge so we can go a little further to the edge. Your player will not fall off this. If there's nowhere to walk, the player will not walk. So essentially, we've, we've pretty much done. All we need to do now is just add this script to the player. Which I'll put up here. And then what's going to happen is when I click play, it's not going to get the camera, which is going to give us an error. So player, it's got the nav mesh clone, which is good, but you can see it's not moving anywhere because it's not got a camera, so it's not got nowhere to actually move to. So all we need to do is we need to set this camera, uh, and we'll set it to main camera, and then right so to actually get the camera to work like without actually assigning it so basically what we're going to do is we're going to get whatever client or host or anything joins the game it's just going to get the main camera for now until we add an actual camera script for each individual client host blah 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 we're going to go cam equals camera dot main so what's that what that's going to do is it's going to get the main camera from the scene so if you've got two main cameras in the scene and the both tags are set to main camera, it's going to get a bit confused. And it's trying, it's just going to get one of them. It doesn't really matter which one. So now, if I was to go to my player, I'm just going to set uh, these, this nav mesh up to be a bit more responsive. So acceleration, I'm literally just going to put that to 99999. Uh, angle speed, so that's just turning speed, 9999. don't really matter because it's just going to be quick as hell, boy. I'm going to set that to 5 as well just to be a little quicker. So now if we click play and we click host and we right click, uh, left click, boom. Oh, look at that. We're moving. We're moving, boys. We're moving. Right. So now if I run this, hopefully we will get no bugs and everyone will just be able to move about. Right. So you'll see if the host moves about, it's moving around on my client. If the client moves about, it's moving about on the host. Would you look at that? We've actually got movement. We've got actual movement. We can move around. So now technically, you could make a race game. So whoever wins, wins. It's up to you. Completely up to you. So yeah guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you have enjoyed this absolute jankiness of a video again, do not forget to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. There's going to be plenty more tutorials to come. In the next tutorial, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get so each player has an individual camera to rotate, not just one singular camera in scene. Because then any player can go off and do what they need to go do, basically. And if you've got any comments or any questions or you get stuck with anything, leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to help you out just because I'm, I'm a nice guy like that. There's a couple of things we're going to tweak in the next video within the player controller, but again, the main focus of it will be the camera movement slash rotating around the camera and uh, the player and stuff like that. So yeah, guys, I've been Mr. Wedgie. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. And until the next video, peace.